everyone. So today I'm going to dive into our thoughts around time, feeling like we're running out of time, and giving you a few tips and a little things that you may need to hear that you might have heard somewhere else, but I'm going to just say them again for you. So here we go. So first I want to give you a backstory about me. If you don't know, I am a recovering people pleaser and workaholic. So if you know me for years, you know that I have had moments with three jobs and a full-time schedule at school. One of those jobs, I was an RA, so basically they can bug me at any point of the day. <laughs> I loved being an RA. It was just really hard that moment of time that I had all of those jobs. I was working in the police station as a student. I was a resident advisor. Um, both of them on campus. Actually, all three of them were on campus. The third one, I was working in the bookstore during a rush time. Plus, I had a full, I don't know how many units, 18 more? I have no idea. It was a lot. Um, and that was not only how I've done that. Uh, when I've had full-time jobs, I don't mind taking overtime. Um, when I was a parking officer, there was plenty of times that I was working 16 plus hour days. <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> Um, but I've been working on it and in the lot, especially in the last year, I have reclaimed more time for me instead of just working or just doing things for other people. There's plenty of times that during my free time, I was always doing something for somebody else. Now I'm not saying don't do that because sometimes doing that actually fills your cup, but when it empties your cup, you need to start doing things that fill your cup. So I was able to kind of work towards not being a workaholic because it was honestly probably one of the reasons my health was always all over the place especially for migraines i had a lot of resentfulness for people that I was helping I had i was resentful about work half the time especially when i was working like i don't know 10 12 15 hour days and then yeah so the point of all of this is to share with you that one, I'm still not perfect, but I didn't come from a place that always had like balance. And I want to help anybody who's watching this video understand that balance is very important. You'll never always be balanced all the time at every moment. Know that. But when you're working towards balance, you have a lot more things that you can do. And what I get from a lot of people, either if they're my clients or they're just friends or anything like that, I get, I hear a lot of the whole, and I've done it before, I don't have time. Like it's literally, it's almost literally like this. They tell me something they really want to do and then follow up with, I have no time. <laughs> and I want, this is one of the little hard truths that you may have heard um, that will still probably be hard to hear. And if you're angry about it, I have no problem with you commenting below. You need to get it out, get it out. Totally fine. Um, but just know that it's mostly coming from you not willing to create the space for whatever you're wanting to do. So if you want to um, start a new hobby and you say you have no time for it, Will you make time for other things? You make time for doctor's appointments. You make time for other people. You make time. Like, we all have 24 hours in a day, but we make time for things. If you really want to do that hobby, you'll make time for it. I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying maybe you're at an 8, not a 10 <laughs> of the whole wanting scale. And that's totally fine. You probably need to work towards that, and that's still fine. But if it has nothing to do with that, I just wanted to kind of um, sit with this topic for a second about creating time for yourself, creating the space for the time. I'm giving you permission to create time, to create the space, to create anything you need to create to put in that thing that you want to work on. Do you want to do something? Is there a goal you want to work on? Is there something that you want to do for fun? Right now I'm doing hand lettering. I'm doing a hand lettering course. I make time for it because it's something I want to do. If there's things I don't want to do, I'm not going to make time for it unless it's like something that's going to contribute to me eating because I have nothing else. Like if I don't want to cook, but I have nothing in my fridge, I'm going to have to cook. <laughs> like just, just the, you know, there's some things that you just have to do, but you should be working in a good percentage of your time should be things that you want to do. Now, if you're working a nine to five, work that nine to five, of course. If you want to eventually leave that, you should be doing steps to leave that. But if you want to stay there and you're truly happy there, 
if you're really happy there, then consider that part of the time that you want to do. But you still need to do things for yourself. So if you want to take half an hour of your hour lunch break to work on something else or to go for a walk or anything, use that. If you want to do it after work or before work, move your day around so it can work for you. And that comes into tracking your energy and kind of a time log. You could do a time log. I, don't, I suggest it and I don't suggest it at the same time. Um, do a time log if you really have no idea where your time is going. Like your actual literal time slot. So you have no idea. Or you have some sort of weird idea and you're like, I still don't know where my time's going. Do a time log. It'll give you an idea. Either write it down or put it on a calendar saying I did this, I did this, I did this. Like it'll be annoying. Trust me. It is annoying. But it's very helpful. One, if you're trying to start a budget, normally you write all the things that you have to pay for and you track your weekly or daily expenses and you can see where your money is going. When you're doing a diet or just tracking your food, you can see what you're eating. That's the thing. You need to be able to see it. So have it written down, see where everything's going, tracking your energy. So you can either track your energy throughout the day, but especially if you're women, I suggest you tracking your energy through your cycle. If you don't have a cycle, you can still track your energy because you will still have some sort of semblance of something happening um, if you're not actually menstruating. But for those who uh, menstruate or, you know, whenever you do, some people, you know, have birth control that I think blocks out for a few months, still track it. And I go like this because I have a circle tracker. Track which days, your, track your sleep, track your energy, track your mood. Um, those are main three things you should track. I think... Today I slept about six hours, yesterday I slept around seven, the day before it was about seven or around there, and that's not normal for me. Normal for me, normal or typical, whatever you want to say, is more about eight, eight-ish hours, eight and a half some days, and so I've been noticing, and you'll see this on my channel, I'm going to actually track this even more, I'm noticing those days that I am ovulating which currently I'm not trying to have a kid, but I do know, you know, you should always, if you're a woman or a person who's menstruating, should kind of get an idea when this is happening because it kind of affects your everything. <laughs> um, so around the time that's happening and I believe a few days after, you have a lot more energy. If you have a lot of like either home projects or if you're a freelancer or anything that you wish you had more time for something, that's a great time to do it because you might have more energy to do it. So like today I woke up earlier, I did all of my morning things a lot earlier and I am just getting a lot of things done because this is the day that I have a lot of energy. And the days that I don't, I'm not going to do as much. I'm going to do the bare minimum for the day and that's okay with me because on the days that I have energy, it's kind of, it balances out that way. It's really neat. It's really cool. And it, I would say anybody should really do this. See if there is a pattern that you can kind of catch and then you can plan your things accordingly. So you do have that more time when you can capitalize on it. You don't have to do everything. <laughs> now there's two main points of this. One, you can delegate things. You can ask for help. I'm giving you permission to ask for help if you need to do something and you feel like you don't have the resources to do it. We are so scared to ask for help and I totally understand that. And the thing is, asking for help does two things. One, it tells a person that you need help. <laughs> but two, you're telling yourself that it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to receive the help. And even if you don't get it from that person, that person may give you another person that they may know the answer. So if you ask somebody that you don't know something and you ask them about it, they don't know, but they know somebody who does, you just got hooked up with a resource. A few resources that I love doing personally is like Instacart. And I know a lot of people, you know, talk about grocery delivery and stuff. You do the pickup ones or whatever, but I love it for so many different reasons. When my health was probably near the worst and I was like it's really hard for me to walk around. Instacart honestly helped me so much because I didn't have to go shopping for it. Yes there's a little up fee but I mean you're paying for a service so. <laughs> um, here's the thing sometimes you have to trade other resources for your time which is totally fine. So I did that a few times and I realized how much it helped me and it's kind of funny because Instacart will tell you how many hours you saved when you use them. So that's one of them. This is not sponsored 
in any way, but if you're interested in Instacart, there's a link down below. I will say there's other ways to do it, like, um, you know, yeah, any delivery, really, but you can also use uh, Fiverr or Care.com or even on Craigslist if you're looking for help. I mean, someone can help you with pretty much anything, and a lot of people are especially friends. Now, don't overstep, but you can always ask. If they say no, don't harp on them, and I'm going to continue that in a second, but that's my little spiel on the ask for help if you need it. Um, ask for help if you think you need it too. Not if you know you need it, but if you just think you need it. Um, sometimes you just need a, you need a sounding board. And if you're not sure how to, you know, post something or anything like that, you might just need to talk it out with somebody and then you, you got it. <laughs> it's right there, right in you. But if it's something more um, technical or physical or anything like that you, you, you know that you can't do, ask. <laughs> it's, it's not going to hurt you. So the two things there were to ask for help or hire help. But the next one I want to say was kind of what I mentioned before is no is a complete sentence. That is for you and for the person you're asking. So if somebody asks you to do something and you're like, I can't, I, like you're having a, 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 an anxiety attack because you have no energy resource to give that person and you need to tell them no, it's okay to say no. I'm also giving you permission to do that. On the flip side, if you're asking for help and they say no, it's okay. Don't get upset with them. Don't be resentful, anything like that. Go to another resource. And I'm saying that because it can be very defeating for some people to ask for help and then not get it. But just be okay with that. You cannot control other people, especially if you're asking for help. Please don't do that. Um, but you also, you can control yourself. So you realize that they cannot help you. You can say thank you, whatever you want. Move on to another person you can help. Or you can ask them a follow-up question, which is, do you know anybody who can? So don't say something like, oh, you never helped me, and then you just are upset. If you're having that kind of problem with a relationship, that is a different issue that you need to discuss. But when you're truly asking for help with something, it's okay to ask that. I mean, it's, it's not bad. Like, they might know somebody, and they just don't know if they can tell you because they don't have the permission to tell you about another resource. People are interesting. <laughs> like... I wish people talked more <laughs> and just like say what they're feeling like without being rude like you can really say what's bothering you without hurting somebody else like it's not hard just be like well, well, if you can't help me that's fine do you know somebody who will or who can and if they don't know that stop there move go somewhere else <laughs> it's not that bad but when going back to you you don't have to explain yourself but also it's okay if you feel like you need to in this season of life so or if that's just like your core personality so if someone asks you to do something and you feel like saying no and stopping there is a little too harsh because they're your friend and that's not how you would normally talk to them talk to them the way you would talk to them say no sorry i'm doing this or remove the sorry you can say whichever way you want um the point is to just communicate <laughs> uh this that's the main key here is communicate with people you're asking for help and the people who are asking for your time. And it's kind of give a like, give or and take. If you feel called to help someone and you feel like it won't stampede on your time and it actually like doing that is you're like a zone of genius and you love doing things like that. Say, you know, someone asked for you to knit a sweater and you're really good at it and you love it. I don't know where I'm going with this, <laughs> but you are like, great, I can do that because that's also your pastime. Do it, like do whatever you truly want to do with your time. That's, that's the core. Sorry about that weird cut. They're doing something outside and I didn't know if it was too loud. So I stopped for a second. And I just wanted to end this with, um, I have a free worksheet that I'll post down below. It's kind of, you know, taking areas of your life, a social family, career, money, uh, physical, recreation, leisure, life routine, responsibilities, giving back, contribution, mental, emotional, and inner well-being, like those areas, you're going to, you know, scale to see where you're at. And then you're also going to write what you would like to change in those areas. And please don't skip that part. Don't just do the survey thing and then not do that part. It's very important that you actually write if you're doing the social and family relationships, maybe overall you notice it's 
not that good in this season of your life, write how you want it to be. Like write things that you want to do or anything like that. Anything that comes to your mind, write it. Um, and that's for each area. And then after that, there is a few more questions that you can dig deep and you know, if there's not enough space for you to write, if you're a writer and you just love, especially if you've been journaling for a while, you may need more pages, but you know, it's to create your ideal life, to um, kind of see those difficulties and challenges that you currently have and just kind of digging into what immediate changes that you want to bring into your life to kind of balance it. And when you're done with that, one, if you have any questions, just email me, but two, actually do them. Like if you notice that you did all this and you're, maybe you have goals for 2020, if, if they kind of don't match up, tweak your goals. You were probably a different person than you are a month ago when you made those goals. <laughs> so it's totally fine. Tweak them, make sure that everything's kind of all good, good and then continue. But I suggest to do the worksheets at least once every three months or so, so you can kind of see where you're at and kind of kind of always stay that path and it's it's just a good check-in but beyond that I want to summarize what I just talked about in this video <laughs> um so the next time somebody asks you to do something you feel like it's going to take a lot of your energy you can say no now if they're a tiny human you're taking care of or like a dog that needs to be fed please tend to their basic needs but other than that you can say no <laughs> if you do ask for help and I give you full permission to ask for help anytime you need help. And they say they can't because maybe they're protecting their own time. Be okay with that. You can ask them if they know anybody who can help them, but don't hold it to them. They're probably protecting their energy and their time the same as you. And honestly, I would probably commend them for that. <laughs> Track your energy through the month, uh, through the day, through the month. See what you're doing, see where your time's going. And see really if you want to create that ideal day, ideal week, ideal month, ideal year, anything like that, and try to work towards that. You have everything that you need inside you. And it's funny because I'm wearing, I'm wearing something that says that. All I need is within me. And that's so true. You have all you need that's inside you. If you have any questions because you have questions, post them down below. The one thing I ask is... As I said in the beginning, if you're upset with anything I said, post it down below. Because <laughs> I, I want you to actually write it and then read it to yourself to see if maybe you change your mind after or that's exactly how you feel. I am not here to tell you how to feel, but I am here to tell you that you have full permission to take your time back. Bye.